Hi everyone, welcome back to the uh, YouTube thing. Bollocks, has it really been that long? Anyway, welcome back to Excel Garage, guys. It's been a bit of a while since the last episode. I apologize for that, but uh, I just really haven't been doing a whole lot of car stuff. I'm trying to buy my first property and move out. Other than getting uh, worried about that and, and busy with work, I've been trying to make some little furniture as well. Some little resin tables. Which has been a bit of fun. Probably could have uh, videoed it and shown it to you guys. I really don't feel that my personality alone is enough to carry a video about making some resin tables to an audience of uh, people into cars. So uh, perhaps perhaps another day. I actually have one of the uh, in progress ones with me, so I'll give you a little peek of that. Here it is, just bought some uh, these gnarly slabs of wood and uh, filled them with resin, as you can see. They've come out pretty nice. Plan is to just slap some legs on these. Uh, of course, I need a whole lot more sanding, that's why it's all cloudy. There you go, some little coffee tables. So anyway, back onto car stuff today, and most importantly, we're back onto the engine bits. So just to bring everyone up to speed, if you uh, don't know what this engine is or what my plans are with it, essentially this is a L92. Uh, it's an LS engine family, and it's basically the poor man's LS3. It's uh, all aluminium as per the LS3, uh, but it comes out of truck. So it has, you know, slightly, it has a truck cam, it has VVT, things like that. Um, as you can see, mine is a little scabby and dirty, uh, but if you've been watching the previous episodes or if you want to have a go look at those, then I've already um, built all the heads up here. And that was a lot of fun. And my next phases are really to strip this down, rebuild it, new bearings, piston rings, the lot. So that's what we're going to do today. We start taking out some pistons, having a look at the bearings and going from there really. And of course, once this is all said and done, the idea is to, uh, well, hopefully make, I don't know, 450-ish horsepower and drop it into this, which is my uh, GT86. So anyway, enough of that. So enough of that really, let's uh, flip this over, whip the sump off and start taking out some pistons. Right, well I lied. Before we uh, take the pistons out, I'm just gonna take all the lifters out. And uh, here's the lifter trays. And the lifters normally sit on these. I'll show you what that look, looks like in a moment. I'm not too fussed about damaging these, so I'm just going to use a pair of pliers here. Just yank them out. <clears throat> here we go. And here we go. So this is what the uh, lifters look like. It's just a little roller lifter. I'm pretty sure they're hydraulically sprung. Field of oil and all that. That end rolls over the cam lobes, and this end has the push rod seated in it, and just, uh, of course, pushes it up. They all sit in this lifter tray. Sit in there like that, and there's four of those. 16 lifters. Simple. I'm gonna be replacing all of these, because uh, no reason not to. They're old, the lifter trays are plastic, they get worn out, and uh, at the moment these can't spin, but if they crack, they could spin and just, you know, flattens out your cam, so that's no good. I'm gonna replace these nice and easy with some uh, LS7 parts. They're generally the best OEM lifters, so uh, replace the whole lot. And the reason for doing this now really is because uh, eventually we're gonna be taking out the cam, of course, and replacing that all together. And like, like I said, we're gonna be replacing these lifters anyway, so there's no point keeping them in. And uh, if you keep them in when the, if you move the cam beforehand, then they have a chance to drop down, and uh, you definitely don't want that. So we got all the lifters out, and they're all looking all right. You know, wear-wise, I don't see any big gouges, which is good. No wear on the lifters. Hopefully, no major wear on the cam bearings, but probably wrong there. So I said, next thing we're gonna do is flip it over and start taking out the pistons. I only had four sump bolts of the engine, so definitely need to replace those, but I'm gonna replace the sump, all the gaskets, everything, so it's not a big deal. Let's drop this down there. Windage tray. Nice. Again, it's weird. The windage tray only has two nuts of it. So uh, this engine's definitely been a part before. Question is why. I've turned it over by hand. 
Haven't seen any issues. I've seen the uh, bores or cylinders. Again, haven't seen any major wear or big gouges or anything like that. So I'm not really sure, you know, why this engine was a core, why it's been a part before. But I mean, hopefully, you know, once we replace every bearing, every gasket, the rings, all the pistons and so on, then hopefully, I mean, it's basically gonna be a brand new engine at that point, so who cares? Right, now I've already taken out piston number four. Uh, let's have a look at that. So as I say, I've already taken this piston out previously uh, when we first took the engine apart. And the main thing here is I just want to have a look at the bearings. So um, I've already taken off all the rings. I need to give these, uh, just can give these a bit of a clean up. Not gonna be too harsh of them. Make sure they're not all gummed up and that the new uh, rings and so on can sit on them nicely. And the main things that I find really interesting about these pistons is uh, they have what's called a cracked cap set up. So you see here isn't a nice flat milled surface, it's actually cracked. Same on the other side. And what they do is they make these rods out of one piece and they snap the cap off. Means that these caps can only ever fit to these rods. There's no interchangeability, you can't put them around the wrong way or anything. Um, I guess, I don't know, it makes it easier for them to manufacture them. And uh, bearing wear wise, I mean, I've cleaned this one up, but you can see a couple of little lines there. And I mean, I've been had my grubby mitts all over them, but they don't look too bad. No big scores, nothing you can catch with your fingernail. So I'm hoping that all the others are going to be like this and then we can just replace them as for what they are. Now, if you were a proper engine builder, I mean, you'd go to you'd go to all the lengths of uh, like checking the journals and checking all the tolerances and how much material your crank has left and then buying your bearing space on that. But what I'm going to start by doing is trying to look for these part numbers. It's a little bit difficult to see. Trying to look for these part numbers, buy the same bearings, test them, check the tolerances once I've got the new bearings. And if they're within spec, I'm just going to run those. I don't see any reason to uh, go absolutely crazy on it. Basically just going to replace like for like and go from there really. So that was piston number four. Let's take out number three. And then the only other thing really that I'm not replacing is the rod bolts. There's all kinds of horror stories with those cracked caps I just showed you. <coughs> Using any kind of like heavier duty or ARP bolt warps the journal of the rod and uh, overlizes them. So that's no good. Here we go, piston number three. Oh, putting the cap the wrong way around. It's a good start. And there we go. It's looking all good. It's got its rings on there. You can just see it's just filthy, absolutely filthy. And you can see on the bearings, it doesn't look like there's too much wear. So that's good. So now we just need to get all the rest of them out. It's number eight. And, uh, I won't bore you by doing all the others, so let's just speed things up.
Right, here we go. So we've got all the pistons out. Let's have a look. So here we go. So you can see light through all of these cylinders there. And you're probably not going to be able to see it on camera. But if we get right into some of these journals, you can see they're looking pretty healthy. No major scratches. They probably could do a polish. Who knows, might get that done. Might take the crank out and take it, well, when I take the crank out to replace the crank bearings, I might take the crank down to a little machine shop and just get them to polish up these journals. Also spins super smoothly. It's probably very difficult to see, but they're gummy. They're dirty, they're smudged. All the gunk that came off the pistons is, uh, is in the uh, cylinder balls themselves. But they're really not looking too bad. What we'll do next time is I think we'll uh, start cleaning it up. We'll start, get the cam out and just start cleaning everything up. And from there, we'll be able to uh, hone the cylinders, be able to clean them up, make sure they're all good, make sure there's no deep scores there. So we took out all the lifters earlier and these are gonna get thrown away. <laughs> so, uh, sorry fellas. And we've got all the pistons here. There's the number four I cleaned up previously. And you can see kind of the amount of cleaning that all of these need. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the old rings, just get out all the crud from uh, in the ring kind of gaps. We're gonna re-ring all the pistons. We're gonna give them new bearings. Just give, them, give the whole engine a new lease of life. So there we have it. Right, so there we have it guys. I think that's where we're gonna end today's episode. So it's, it's good to get back into things. It's good to do some car stuff again, crack open the engine to get the pistons out. So as you can see, I've got a whole load of work ahead of me to get this engine cleaned up, uh, but I've got a load of time. My, uh, my ideal goal to start really taking the engine out of the 86 is probably around the end of September. So got all the summer, gives me time, lets me save up for all the other expensive bits I need, gearbox mounts and so on. So yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, uh, you know, Give the video a like, subscribe perhaps. There's a whole load of you that watch these videos that aren't subscribed. So uh, if you're one of those people, please do subscribe to the channel. That'd be brilliant. Yeah, maybe drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think the engine looks like. Do you think it's a, uh, it's a turd I'm trying to polish or a diamond in a rough? And if you do want to uh, support the channel at all, as you can see, we've got merchandise. Where are my Rocket Bunny A6 hoodie right now? You can get this and many others like this or this all on my merch store, the link for which is down below in the description. Or you can head over to uh, xlautomotive.co.uk. That's enough rambling on for this one episode, so uh, catch you guys next time. Until then, have a good one. Cheers. Bye for now.